thank you all for being here tonight with us for our programming with Generative AI webinar with our speaker, Vineet Sharma. My name is Carrie Williams. I'm the Communications Information Officer here at Extension. I'm fortunate to be joined by my two colleagues, Jennifer Pittman and Jim Pasteca. Jennifer is the Assistant Director of our Marketing Group, and Jim is the Program Manager of the Engineering and Technology Department. Uh, let's take a quick look at our agenda, just to have a sense of what to expect tonight. Um, we're going to kick things off with intros and a couple of housekeeping items, and we'll hand things over to Vineet, and then we'll open up your questions at the end. We do have a lot we're excited to cover tonight, so we're going to ask that we save questions until the very end. That'll be for sort of our 15-minute dedicated Q&A, um, but of course, if questions come to you, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat, and then we'll knock them off um, as soon as we wrap up the slides. Uh, in terms of housekeeping, just a few items. Um, as I said, questions will go in the chat, but if you think of anything later, you can always email us at extension at ucsc.edu and someone will follow up with you shortly. You probably saw that we are recording tonight's event. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that recording in the coming days. And we're just gonna polish things up. We'll include it with a follow-up message that also has um, some quick links to some relevant coursework. Um, so with that, let me bring in our speaker. Um, Vineet Sharma is leading us tonight. He has over 30 years of experience in technical architecture, upper level management, professional teaching, and entrepreneurship. He's held a variety of leadership roles in all aspects of software development lifecycle. He's the co-founder of Ontic, a technical analysis tool for stock market data positions. He is a University of Silicon Valley Computer Science Department director and associate professor. He's also part of our family here at Extension. He, not only is he an instructor, but he's the program chair of the Computer Programming Certificate Program and the Java Development Specialization Program. So we are in expert hands tonight. Vineet, with that, I'm gonna just stop my share and hand things over to you. Thank you very much. So thank you, Gary. Um, everybody, uh, good evening. Uh, this is very exciting time and uh, my excitement always goes, you know, to the roof whenever I see new things. Uh, not that I go for every shiny object, but this is something really, really very interesting. Uh, I've been programming forever. If I tell you that I pro my first program was in 1982, then you'll know my age, okay? But here we are, still learning. There's so many things to do, but it's an exciting time again, as I said. So let's move on. What I want to do today is introduce what is the topic and how can and any learner, lifelong learner or current student can learn through the AI, you know, our learning process, especially we'll focus on programming. So that's that's our goal. Um, so I, I'll do hands-on to give more question and answer. It's much easier than just talk, but of course I have some slides to share with you, but mostly what I'm going to do is go through the, you know, uh, I call it lab. That's what I'm going to do. So let's let's introduce. Uh, what happens is to learn. You go, you know, more and more you are already doing it. So what it will allow this artificial intelligence is it will take you to the next level. You're learning in a very fast pace, but very how do I say? Uh, you know, like fulfilling. It is so much authentic knowledge you can get. But you have to be careful, you know, we are going going through those and we'll talk about it where it could be a gotcha moment or where you can be careful to make sure you learn as a learner, you know, you don't have, you should not be just copying and pasting things, you should be really understand it, you know, and then use the power of AI for your learning process. Uh, that's what we're going to talk. So you you all know it. You might have seen it um, in you know a lot of uh, you know news. If you follow it, when uh, generative AI uh, first introduced was ChatGPT, uh, when was it? Um, last November. Yeah, when it came in. So that time, you know, I did not know for maybe a good one month, and somebody showed me here, and I'm like oh my God, am I going to stay as a teacher or not? It's going to take over or what have you. But once I dive in and learn more and more, I said, oh my God, it's just a tool. It just enhances everybody's learning. That's all it is. So knowing what is good for, what it can do, 
and what it cannot do shortcomings also is very important once you know that then you can start navigating and start using it for your purposes i use it daily i'm like where was it before you know why not it was already available now that's what i think right now right it is just revolutionizing mind learning um, and my students learning okay so again what is AI? So AI refers to the development of computer systems capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. Again, let's not go into the debate or, oh, it is intelligent enough or things like that. Let, let's not go into that debate. It's not there. Hopefully it will never be in that level, you know, because we are still most intelligent, you know, creature or the system or what have you. That's what we are because we are most creative. Uh, but it it at certain for certain things it starts working like part of the human intelligence what we are good at. But most important is it does not get tired. It will not say that hey I'm not going to do it. You just asked that question last time. I'm not going to reply you. All those things which comes with the human is not there. Okay. So in some sense, it is much better than us for the repetitive task and recognizing patterns faster. And uh, we may be able to do 10 things or 100 things. It can do millions of things at a time. So those are the things comes with the power of um, AI and what, um, what the computer computing power will allow us to do it. So very quickly, uh, when we say AI, you know, roughly you can think of two two sides of it. One is called discriminative AI, another is called generative AI, you know, so if you want to know, um, you know, what it is really, okay. So uh, discriminative means, you know, something which is like a binary in nature, you know, you can say whether this or that. Uh, so those are, you know, are good classifier, you know, logistic regression and all that things you can do it, but generative is a little bit different meaning generative means it can generate what it can generate is based on the trained data it can generate new things so that's what it is going to generate new things it can it is capable of generating new things you know sometimes it just surprises me uh, when i use it and it was not doing before suddenly it starts doing it and i verify it by going to other browser using other login to see really learned it from there and it can do it yes it did i'll give you one very interesting um anecdotal notes i had it in fact i had a screenshot i was trying to look for that screenshot to share i didn't find it um you know i'm, I'm a sometimes i want to go in you know some political news and all that i was looking for it and i, I asked something and it it, it said that, you know, Biden was had not even announced, you know, it was, I knew that chat GPT cannot do it. I went to Bard AI, uh, or I think I went to um, Bing AI to look at it. And it started arguing with me that, you know, when he will announce, and then I'm like, he has already announced, go and look. And then it came back to me and said, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, he has announced this one, da da da, it gave me where it found it. And then and I said, hey, glad I helped you. And then it thanked me for helping it. And then and then I said, you know what? Let me figure it out. Did it really learn or not? And then I went to another browser, did not use my own that, and you know, like anonymous or something. I again signed up like somebody else and did it. Guess what? It already knew it. It didn't say that it did not know. So that was very amazing. And I, you know, I'm pretty sure I can find the screenshot somewhere. Anyways, um, so now you might have seen, you know, many, many, many applications has come, which is like ChatGPT, their generative AI. So they are mostly based on a GPT-4, uh, is, is, is an underlying technology. And, uh, you know, Google, uh, you know, was thinking that, okay, they're behind, they got to come out. They came out also. Now we have a lot of choices for us. Not only that, what you will see it is many, many companies are already putting this, you know, AI in their system. 
For example, I'm an avid user of Notion. I don't know if you, as a student, you know Notion. Notion is a very good note taker, collaborative uh, tool and all that. Guess what? There is AI right there. You can just write something and say, hey, beautify it, do this, do that. It will do it for you, okay? So, so it's an amazing time how things are going, okay? So what you need to know very quickly, if you did not know, the most famous are these three, I'll tell you, um, because they are kind of general purpose. There are many other generative AI, they have made very special purpose, just like computer languages. For example, SQL, SQL is only for uh, structured query language for the database kind of ideas. This also like general purpose, you can ask a lot of things. Some are very like specific to do graphics or some are, someone is good for this, someone is good for that. But these three are very important. And then if you want to test it out, uh, I have my favorite, you know, of course, they didn't pay me anything to say this, but uh, what I find is uh, chat GPT is pretty good. And then you could think Bing AI is, um, you know, that same ancestry is also same, but the way their interface works and the way they have, you know, restriction, I use that one the list, frankly speaking. Uh, I use Google Bard. Google Bard was not that good very, you know, until recently, but now I was amazed how fast they're learning, better and better they are becoming. But chat GPT is still on top of my list. The reason is it really simulates human interaction for me. That's what it is. Meaning it will just write, you know, just one simple interface of writing as if it is writing the letter, one character at a time, it comes in, that simulation itself gives you that vibe that it is thinking and it is, you know, generating the, you know, knowledge. And Bard will just come out, boom, answer at one time. That doesn't give you that feeling. It just does the work and just gives you answer right away. But I think they will change. I think they will understand it and they'll keep doing it. A couple of things yeah, I put it in here to tell you is, uh, so chat GPT does not have internet connection. Make sure you understand it. Okay, and chat GPT says that I only know knowledge up to 2021. So it's kind of a little bit stale. So don't come, don't ask any recent things and all that. And especially for the student, make sure that if your teacher asks you to write an essay on 2022 events and try to use chat GPT, you know, that won't be, you know, correct uh, essay for you, okay? Um, yeah, Google Bard is, you know, almost like a Google experience and all that, okay? But here it is, you know, I, I don't want to keep on going saying, hey, this is this, this is that. Why not let's hear from the horse's mouth? I call it a lab. I want to do some hands-on to show you, okay? So let's, let's go and ask these themselves, who are you? So for example, I'm already logged into my Bard AI. So hopefully it will just go to my session, okay? And good thing is, you know, that it saves the my session. So if you go there, you will see a lot of things I have been doing in the past, okay? So I have this AI for you to show you. Um, I, I don't want to spend time in here writing it. So for example, if these are the small ones, I'll ask you, just I'll ask it, hey, who are you? Just, just for fun. Just ask them itself what it says about itself, okay? So here it is. Hey, I'm Bard. I'll try my best to follow the instruction and I will use knowledge to answer this, that. Just look at it. Read is a good read at times to understand what it is, okay? And then I said, you know, give me a bullet pointed answer. So sometimes I'll write down and say, hey, okay? So can you introduce yourself in five or less point? bullet points. Okay, I'm Bard, a large language model for Google AI. Now it says large language model. You know, I'm like, okay, I never heard this. What is this? I can be inquisitive, you sit in there and treat it as a tutor, okay? Um, no internet mean, somebody was asking, okay, I'll just Keep it in there. No internet means it has no direct internet connection so that it can go and look for it. It, it The knowledge, what it has, 
is already built in there. It does not, it cannot go and find new knowledge like Google does it, okay? That's what it means. So say, say suppose I want to have a follow-up question, say describe a large language model, okay? So it will give you that answer, um, okay? So here you go. So it will tell you what is the language, large language model means. Okay, generic text such as poems. So really meaning it has been fed so much of the languages, but when it says language, it could be any language, all other natural language, but guess what? Because it already know language, computer is all about language. There is a, there is a grammar to all computer languages. So it naturally knows computer languages also. And a lot of code has been fed in so it knows that too, okay? So, you know, as a curious person, you should always ask and know a little bit better. So one of the questions one time I asked it is, and again, remember it is, it is based on a lot of, you know, this kind of underlying technology it uses it. And again, you want to know more about it, go there, ask what is GPT-3, you know, tell me more about it, tell me this, tell me that. You keep going, you know, in that, you know, underneath if you want to. So for example, I'll ask, describe it, your learning process in algorithmic level. Okay, I may ask that. You want to go a little bit more understanding who you are, how did you learn, okay? Kind of scenario. And then it will give me this data set. So pre-processing, uses neural networks, keeps learning, and if you go and ask similar thing for chat GPT, it gives, you know, very interesting one. I have asked this one to chat GPT as well. So let's go to chat GPT and ask that question. Okay. And then you can see my, you know, how much I use this. So if I ask it, describe your learning process in algorithmic level. So I found it very fascinating, meaning it gives step by step the thing they did it for it, okay? And I think one of them, Bard or, you know, I forgot which one, when I, I try to go inside, they'll say, oh, this is a proprietary, I cannot tell you this, right? But <laughs> chat GPT is more, more, more chatty, maybe. It's more chatty and gives you more Maybe it comes because of the open AI. I'm not too sure about it, okay? So again, if you are interested, I don't want to deep dive in, in this topic itself will be long, right? I'll keep going with my other things, what I want to say um, and teach you in this. So let's say like this, because this is about computer programming and all that, the, my another question to it is this. Um, how do a new computer language learner benefit from using you? Okay, so look at it. This is important. If you can read it fast enough. I'm telling you, I sat down and learned Go language. Of course, you know, how I learn or anybody who has been coding for the last 40, 30 years, how that person will learn and how you will learn might differ. You might take a little bit longer. But with this tutor in my hand, I could, you know, like sometimes you say you can you can you can read the language you cannot write it you can not speak it kind of scenario i could understand after this one go language you know really i had never heard go language but i started doing it because you know every everyone has a loop everyone has a you know if a statement to do this a certain way that way so you can go and learn things something which you may not need it just out of curiosity or for your company or your for uh, any happiness project you might be doing all right so some interesting thing i want to do it as a, i'm teacher i really wanted to say hey what it says about 
my job. Uh, Jim, can I put you on spot? Can you read the text a little bit so that you know you can go re fast reader? Okay, what do you want me to read? No, 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 no. I'm saying, can you read it enough? It's small enough, or you know, I should make it a little bit bigger. Oh, looks good. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. So my other question was, do you think eventually you will replace teachers in the classroom? I just wanted to ask it. Let's see what it says. I'm surprised. I have been asking this question forever. So many times I have asked. It was it had three or four bullet points. Now it has gone up to ten bullet points. Okay. So if you read it, even if you read only the bullet points, almost everybody will agree on this point. Okay. So what it is is really, it is a tool. But what it will do it is it will enhance all of our disability how we do as a human interaction. We can use this one to enhance our capability. Everything you in here, what it has listed as a human being, we do better. We always will do better, okay? So, so that, that is a good, good thing. And guess what? Many of you are about to start in coding. Many of you are thinking, huh, should I be a coder now? Should there be a job left? Why not ask this guy again? Let's see what he does. Do you think eventually you will replace coders in the companies? Again, almost similar answer because that's what it is. Human being, there are companies need to solve very complex tasks. It is so contextualized. Think about big companies, Microsoft, you know, think about the Google, the things they have to do in their company to solve their problem. You know, you cannot tell ChatGPT, go and do it. For example, I give it a little bit of complex work, it doesn't. It cannot do it. Okay, it just cannot finish those. Okay, so yeah, I, this is just for fun. I did it one time, so I'll I'll go ahead and put it anyways. I said, so you are saying as a professor of computer science should not be afraid of you. Let's see what it says. <laughs> Absolutely, of course it will say that, but. <laughs> So again, you see the point. Uh, you guys can again, if you want, I can even share this, you know, interaction. What what I just did. But let's let's move on to do uh, rest of the rest of the things. I have it. So again, you saw this. Whatever I I I, I shared with you in that lab, that you know, learning of the language will take you to the next level. Again. This could be a natural language point, but this is the same thing for the computer language as well. And computer language is nothing but the um, subset of a natural language because it's a very small grammar, really. Okay. So many things you are already using, and it was already there. Think about the chatbot we had always coming in in any website, but now they are becoming more and more intelligent, more and more they will know about it and they will guide you, they will give you much more, um, you know, how do I say, uh, intelligent answer to fit what, who we are. Sometimes it's annoying, you know, that is so much knowledge about you, you, but guess what? I'm like, you know what? I get annoyed, but you are good. Thank you for being my assistant, okay? So, <laughs> so again, this guy does, you know, they don't get tired, so that's a good one. So. Intelligent tutoring system. It's like, think about this tool and one of the most important, I'm going to show you about Salkan very, very soon. What you have to think of it is, is a one-on-one -on -one tutor available. And what, you know, if you watch Salkan, I think I'm going to do next in here. Salkan talks about in this TED talk, is very inspiring, 15 minutes. And just, just like what, what, what I had when I first time reaction I had, but of course he had already seen it before and he was already working on it. And then he is in the education so much in the whole world. 
I got inspired after, you know, reading, after going through this one, when he heard about chat GPT coming out, he said one whole week he did not sleep because he said, oh my God, how the Khan Academy is going to, you know, navigate this when it comes to that. But guess what? Open AI was reaching out to him to say, hey, we have this tool, I think it will come very handy, why not you and us work together to see how it will enhance all of the student population um, to learn better. And he, he runs with this two sigma and all those kind of things. It is so amazing. I hope you, you can hear it. I'm not going to walk, you know, go through this, but just hear it out. Look. So uh, anyone who's been paying attention for the last few months uh, has been seeing headlines like this, especially in education. Uh, the thesis has been students are going to be using chat GPT and other forms of AI to cheat, do their assignments, they're not going to learn, and it's going to completely undermine education as we know it. Now what I'm going to argue today is not only are there ways to mitigate all of that, if we put the right guardrails, we do the right things, we can mitigate it, but I think we're at the cusp of using AI for probably the biggest trans positive transformation that education has ever seen. And the way we're going to do that is by giving every student on the planet an artificially intelligent but amazing personal tutor. And we're going to give every teacher on the planet a, an amazing artificially intelligent teaching assistant. And just to appreciate... Guess what? You know, that will be the game changer for me, right? <laughs> if I get a teaching assistant, I have it now in ChatGPT. That's what it really is for me as a you know, teacher. And I become a student many times because that's what I need as a student. So if you go, keep going in here, um, you know, there are places where he shows it, you know, having personal tutor, how, how, how advantages it is. But another place where it is just mind boggling is this. It ends the code. It knows. They, in Khan Academy, they embedded this chat GPT there because OpenAI and Khan Academy work together. So they put another layer there what it does is when the students are learning anything, it does not give you the full answer. You know, there is a teacher mode. If you look at it, there is a teacher mode and there is a student mode. Teacher can get the full answer. But the, if you are in a student mode, it will just guide you as a tutor to go to the next, go to the next, go to the next, okay? And then a student will keep learning it. So, so they put that tool in Khan Academy. That just opened up my eyes when I, I saw that. I said, oh my God, this is how people should use it, okay? So let's keep it there and let's go to the next one, what I'm going to show you here. Let's do AI as a personal tutor. But remember, Khan Academy is already having as a personal tutor, but we don't have that as a, as a you know, just every day, every day Joe, we don't have our own um, you know, Khan Academy thing or something, how do we do it? So here is something I'll show you. I want to show you this other, this one. So for example, I want to use as a personal tutor. Let's go with the Bard, okay? So for personal tutor, suppose I was in algorithm class. I did not know about QuickSort. The teacher gave this, this uh, about QuickSort algorithm, but really I didn't understand it. So I want to come here to understand a little bit better, okay? I can say, hey, please tell me uh, how, how to write a quick sort algorithm, okay? And I said, where do you start? And let's see what it does, okay? Okay, here is the problem. You know what is the problem? I said, I said, I don't, I don't know where to start it gave me full answer. I'm like, okay, that's so bad because that's not how, what I was looking for. I was looking for a hint. Again, this is the warning for all of you learner. If you just learn, here is a copy so fast, you can learn it, put it in there. Guess what? Between bar doing this and you looking at, you copy and paste it, nothing went in here in my brain, okay? 
something has to come in my brain so that it stays i create my own neurons in here so that when i go to my company do give that interview write some code i should be able to do it right i'm not learning anything don't ever do that no cut and paste okay what should you do let me show you how i haggle and then said to bard this is how i'll tell the bard i said i did not ask you to write the full code i was expecting a hint like a tutor okay all right haggle a little bit with it and let's see what happens and i'm telling you it's so polite okay i hope i hope it does it <laughs> so now now it gives me a hint okay kinda all right so it gives me a quick shadow algorithm, works by recursively, this is the, now I said, okay, this is good. I only wanted to know this a little bit more that I can go on. Not only that, it gave me a little bit of this. If I don't want to use this, I may not have to use it, but it gave me a little bit of going and I can go from there, okay? So then, you know, for example, I can go further and ask this, I don't know what I wrote it, let me see. Because every time I do, it gives me different answers. So. My prompt may not be same. What did I say? Wow, that is helpful. Do you have a links? Oh, here it is. Because you know, here is another interesting thing. Without images and all that, when you try to understand any coding, it may not make sense. So there is a visualization thing and all that. And when you are with the teacher, teacher shows you how the you know sorting works and things like that through the visual effect. But it didn't give me, it's very difficult to look at the code and understand it. So I asked, wow, that is helpful. Do you have any links of image? I know it will not show me the whole image. I'm asking this. Give me the link of the images for this and let's see what it does. I'm unable to help. Oh, that's no good because I'm a language large model. You know, you know what? I'm not going to give up. See how I haggle it. Okay. You got to learn. You know, this called prompt engineering is a real job now believe it or not pays more than six figure i heard because if you want to get good work from this generative ai you got to give a good prompt also okay and guess what now our all lang lang linguist people are also going to be employed very much so instead of thinking that there is no job there are more jobs available so let's be happy so okay let me haggle with it i said just give me a text of URL. I said text because, hey, you are text-based. Why don't you give me this? Okay, so let's see what it does. You still don't do it, okay? Now, I, I pulled my hair, thought about it. How can I do it? So then this answer I gave, this question, I did it a little bit differently. And, and then this is how I said do you have anything about algorithm visualization okay algorithm visualization that's what i was looking for okay and let's see what it does there you go okay look at this here is a link why didn't it give me before okay i have gotten this one from so many people that you know there are many things it will not give you, but you got to answer a little bit different question a little bit differently and it will give you the answer. Okay. And then this is the right answer. For example, I'll tell you, this is the algorithm I have been sharing with my data structures and algorithm students forever. Um, because this is so good. Almost I just put it in here to show you. Here it is. So it is from US FCA. Okay, and you can go all kinds of certain so you say animation. I'm not going to go you show you that. You can look at animation of all sorting algorithm. And in visually, you will understand how the sorting works. You know, so, so you look at all of those, you visually understand how that works, and then you write your code, okay, based on some prompt. This is how you're going to learn, okay? So let's go back to this. I think that's all I have for this, you know, lab. All right, I think it is, again, adaptive learning and I can use as a code reviewer, I'll show you, you know, how, how I can use um, generative AI to review my code, 
you know, those are the things we needed, right? Um, I'll, I'll go there and then also, you know, I'll, I'll do most of the labs because the labs are very important. I'll just walk through this one faster. So again, collaboration, I told you as a notion, you know, these are great collaboration environment and all that, they're being better and better. For example, even, you know, uh, if you go to uh, GitHub, a lot of collaboration now being open AI embedded already in there. And then you can use it as a debug, debugging assistant also for you to teach you debugging. Okay. Um, again, some more, some more code review. And I have given you this, this um, presentation will be available to you also to use it. So I give you this link. So you can go to, you know, the Sam Altman is the open AI founder. It's a very good, um, you know, top program you with Alex Friedman, you can hear this. Okay. So with that, oh, by the way, I will also put it in there if time permits, I can talk about the plagiarism about also, you know, it's important to know. And it's also GPT zero, you should know about this. This is the 22 year old guy, I think it might he might be 23 by now. He was so not happy with open AI. He's a, he's a artificial intelligence uh, student. When I heard it, he said, oh my God, there will be a lot of plagiarism and all that, how the university will navigate that. So he created GPT-0 to, to be able to find out if, if this code is generated by the, or anything written is by the open AI. So it is, you know, you, I have gone there. Uh, it is not perfect but it does, it does work. Okay. And then, you know, education partners are already using this system. For example, uh, Canvas uses it. Okay. All right. So I'll go and show you a couple of interesting lab. So I did too. I want to show you use this as a virtual code reviewer. Okay. For example, I have this okay code and i say hey go ahead and can you review this code provide a better version of it so he say is a you know you cannot re you cannot look at it because it's kind of um in one line define find average total equal to zero count equal to zero and this is what it says total you know very simple one and i'm just saying okay go ahead and review it let's see what it gives me the answer So yeah, it says, sure, I can review the code and provide a better version of it, okay? So the code you provide is a good start, but it can be improved in a few ways. The variable names, tool, and count are not very descriptive. How many times I tell my student to write descriptive, when I say descriptive, they think, don't write T and C, write total and count. Total count itself is not descriptive, okay? Total of what, count of what? kind of idea, right? So a little bit more verbose is better. That's what it is talking about. Then I write it and, and then it gave me something in here, which I was not very happy, okay? Again, it did not give the right one, uh, the better version it said, but it's not, you know, it uses the sum and length of this, okay? So guess what I said, and I put chat GPT and this one in the competition. I told it that, hey, can you compare your enhanced code with what I got from chat GPT? Compare and contrast, please. So chat GPT gave me much smaller, okay, like this. Similar, but something avoided. Now let's say what it does. Sure, the code one chapter is a very concise and efficient. Go figure. Bard is saying that, okay, chat GPT is concise. An efficient way to calculate the average of the list of numbers. It uses the sum and length, okay? Your enhanced code is also concise. It says your because the code was mine, it just enhanced it. You know, what I liked about this when I give my code, it does not completely rewrite it. It only enhances mine one. That's better than completely rewriting because my creativity 
Remember, a writing a co writing a program is just like writing an essay. No two person will write same way. So I want my creativity to be there, and it doesn't change that. That even impressed me a lot. Okay. So anyway, see compression contrast. It gives you in here why it is better than that. In fact, in my case, it is not. In my case, there was even even it it did when I inquired other time. It gave me a little bit different. So steps are in here much less than this guy, okay? All right, okay. So now there's another program and this is one of my students. I asked them to give me the code and write code in own term, then, then use chat GPT, compare and contrast. So here it is. So here is a full Java code, okay? So there was a solution for something, you know, it's like, I'm not a good beautifier of the code. Can you format this Java code properly? So code starts from here, whoever knows Java, you know that how it goes. These are just the comment. And then it is a class starting here. And then all the methods and all that, all right? The pattern and all those good thing, okay? So I just ask, to beautify it. Let's see what it does. So, so here it is. So it is beautifying it, but you know, sometimes people have not written it properly it will write it. Uh, and make it more OOP kind of scenario and like that, okay? Uh, I hope this helps. But what happens is it gave me everything. I can come back and a little bit haggle. I said, you know what? I didn't ask you to do, you know, like this. Can you describe this? Because you are learning. Again, remember I said that you need to learn, right? Just getting the answer is not going to make you learn. So to do that, go step by step asking question. Okay, and then it will help. So let's say I will do the lab number four, which is like debugging. So for debugging, you know, ideas in here. So one, one example here, if you see it, there is a divide by zero kind of scenario here. It doesn't test anything in here. So I ask it, can you give me a hint? I just again said hint. What is wrong with this code? I don't want it to just find a problem. I want you to tell me the problem. It figures it out. Okay, so it is good. So it gave me this, but it it did this, but it put the try and catch already to, to write the correct code, okay? So again, you can go ahead and haggle with it and then say, don't do that, tell me just give me a hint. I want to debug myself. I want to have my programmer's aha moment, right? So I said, I only ask for the hint. Okay, don't give me the answer. Okay, again, it give me that. You can again ask, haggle it, or what have you, okay? And it will, it will learn it later on, not, not to do anything. So again, you can give many other example. I have lots of lots of example in here. I think I'm running out of this time, out of my, my time right now. So I'm not going to get other one, but I think I have one which might be important to ask it here. Oh yeah, this, this is interesting. So this one is like improving your learning. Many, many students have a lot of problems learning object-oriented programming, right? Same code, I said this way. I said, can you make this program better OOP, I wrote it, okay? <laughs> I wrote it haggling, I should take, it, take this out, okay? So, okay. So can you make this program better OOP? Same program I gave you before, okay? Let's see what it does.
Okay, here it is. Oh my God, you won't believe what happened. It has learned my pattern already. And in fact, before I was coming to this seminar today, I just saw in, um, in a news that they have given, at least ChatGPT was there. I don't know if Bard figured it out also. It figures it out the pattern from your questions that you are asking that way. So it will give you that answer based on your preferences. For example, suppose you always are asking answer in Python or you are always asking answer on Go language. It will remember that, always give you that answer, okay? Rather than giving generic answer. So in my case, I was already haggling with it to give me just the hint or OOP, don't you understand? What it had done before was, it says, hey, I'm a language model, I don't know, I don't know. I said, I'm just asking you, what's your problem? You know, just, just understand how, what is OOP. Look, exact OOP terminology it used for you, if it is a new thing, that's what you're learning. You know, what is encapsulation? What is a polymorphism? What is inheritance? These are the things as a OOP student need to learn. So it gave you those. Now what you can do it is you take from there, each one of them and say, okay, tell me how I do that. Tell me how I do that, okay? You can keep going from there. I think with that, it might be a good idea to stop right in here and wait for the question, but give me one, one minute really. This is my parting gift to everybody, okay? Um, before I answer it, is this. Remember, remember, this is very, very important. Beneath Sarma has already learned what it is. I'm about to retire, okay? And Bard and, um, and then chat GPT and all that, they, it has learned a lot, it will keep learning it. But guess what? You as a human being, as a student, inspiring student, learner, you still need to learn. Of course, I am also learning. I'm not saying that I'm an expert. What I'm trying to say is we have to learn ourselves in experiential level. Okay, you have to write code. There is no other way. Keep writing the code so that our neurons, we create our own neurons, join it to understand it. So it's important for you to not copy and paste. Very bad idea. Okay, you got to understand the code and write yourself. Okay always get the hint, not the full answer, okay? And then anything you do, get code reviewed and all that, okay? Make sure that you keep your originality, create, if you cut and paste, you become like Bard. You don't become like yourself, right? So what you do it is never get an answer from it without you writing it first. Even if you try 10%, 20%, 30% of the code, you are going to be better student, okay? And learn from it, okay? And then again, what it does is, if, if you might have taken one week to learn object-oriented programming, with this, you might get it done in one week, one day or two days, okay? So it really enhances your productivity as a student or as a programmer or what have you, just for learning purposes, okay? Whatever you are doing. So again, make sure you use this tool, which is really cool, okay? With that, I'll stop, Carrie, and then, you know, take it away. The first one is, can Google Bard do coding yet? Oh, yeah, so the answer is, you have seen it. Bard, ChatGPT, everybody does that, okay? Great. Um, have you tried Claude from Anthropic? Um, no, no. Again, remember, the idea is similar in all cases, okay? Some are very specific, some are good. You might find something much better for your choices. So try it out, try it out. Don't, don't stay with ChatGPT I sold or Bard I sold it, right? I use ChatGPT, today I stayed with Bard, right? Usually I use ChatGPT a lot. So if you find, if it is useful for you, go ahead, you know, test it out. It don't take long, really half an hour, one hour, whatever time you want to spend, okay? Um, 
Um, here's one. Can chat find a test suite for the average program? Uh, let me see what it was. Can chat find a test suite for the average program? Test suite for average program. Find or write? Let me see which, which place it is. I'm that place in a, can you show a programming example? Of course, I showed you. Oh, say using Python or R. Again, same thing. You know, any programming you do it, say, hey, can you convert to a R? Can you write same program in um, Go language? Can you convert this one, this language or that language? Boom, that's what it does very fast. Um, can you uh, test code for you? Oh, AI test code for you or generate test cases for you. Yes, yes, I have done that also. I have asked you to write the test cases. It does test cases also, okay? Uh, may not be in the format your company or somebody is doing it, but it will do, uh, you know, you can say, write multiple, you know, test cases, scenarios and all that, it does it for you, okay? Uh, then I would love to hear some tips, thoughts on chat GPT is a new, custom instructions feature. Exactly, I was talking about custom instruction feature. I just read today in the headline, it was custom instructions. And that's what exactly what I was talking. Instructions, that, instru that, that feature was only available for $20 a month. Now they gave it to everybody, okay, uh, available. So what it is, is like, it, it will remember your choices. It will remember your, um, you know, uh, what other things you said. You can you can ask it to keep it so that way it will do the way it does. So for example, you don't want too much of verbose answer. You say, okay, have only one paragraph of answer or these many characters of answer, things like that. So you can give instructions for it to keep it. Okay, that's what it means, custom instructions. Uh, David wants to talk with someone about programs and UCS extension. Would you recommend? Yeah, I think here are the people. The question is for you guys. You know, there is a, there is a question on that. Right. I can definitely help. Um, so I'll go ahead and put my email into the chat for you. Uh, and then you can give me an email and I'll respond to that. Uh, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Jim. There is one very good question in here. Also, you know, can you describe the process of how to plan code, especially for complex architecture like MVC or some more, some other coding pattern using AI? Very good. Okay. So I did not do it specifically MB, MVC, but I have done a big pro, you know, big topic and I have gone through it. But here is what you have to do it. If it is a big topic, now you have to stay with it. It's like writing a book with this AI. What you have to do it is, I'll give you an example. Say, suppose I am going and giving a lecture somewhere about some topic. And there is a topic given. I'll say that, hey, give me a plan for three hours of teaching of this or five hours of teaching this. So it will give you first plan on that. Boom, 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 okay? Now you can keep that aside and then go chunk by chunk, expand on this one, expand on that, expand on that, expand on that. So if you're doing MVC architecture, what you should do it is stay on the top level and ask question, give me the big high level architecture of this. And then for each architecture, go into the details yourself, keep asking, okay, tell me how I do that. Tell me the higher level of this and go inside. Give me now details of each one of the classes or each one of the unit, what, how to do that. So it will give you one by one going to the details. You do not want everything dumped in one place. It's so difficult to read it. So you need to have your plan yourself to ask the right way and then keep it all. And good thing is it does not forget. I'm so happy if you use your um login and all that it keeps everything in one place and you can go back amazingly where it saves and all that everything is there i don't know when it, i will start losing my my history uh do you see a potential to use generative ai tool to practice uh for technical coding interview oh my god 100 percent. okay so technical interview question is for technical interviews guess what you should do it you should ask 
think about in technical interviews, if you are a coder, 70% of the questions comes from the algorithm. 70%, okay? So start learning algorithm. I gave you that link where you can do the algorithm visualization and all that. So now ask questions about, you know, give me some example of this algorithm and give me some mock interview questions. Can I, can I practice with you? Okay, do that. I have done that. I have done that one for my students to show them and you can do it yourself. And again, you know, if you have some interesting, you know, some questions for me, I'll be very happy. You can go to the website, you can find my link and all that. I'll be very happy to answer anybody's question, okay? Uh, yeah, they're very good question. Kerry, did I, uh, you know, covered almost all of them? I think I, I tried um, all of them. Yeah, I see just a few more. Um, let's see. Did we go, uh, forgive me if we went over this one, what would be a suggested approach to learn on how to create plugins, which would be purpose specific? Again, you know, so plugin, what is the purpose? You go and say, how do I write plugin in this case? So every every tools plugin is written a little bit differently. It will give you that, okay? And then say, okay, give me the details of that. Give me the details of that. That's what it is. For example, I have never written a scraping web scraping tool myself, okay? For example, I want to go and scrape tools, and then I said, you know what? Can you write me a crawler or a scraper for the website in Python? boom there is the answer it gave very correctly how to write web scraping okay so again it you know don't ask it to give you everything it is not going to be helpful ask the way i said stay in a top level you need to have your aha moment just not just because i told you so because you are not going to learn it you are not going to articulate it you'll forget it very fast it's not going to help okay so you stay in the top level, keep asking higher level question and keep going inside, okay? To ask details. There is one more. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I might have missed it, but did you did did you Benit, talk about um how to present the use of AI and writing code in a resume or during an interview? You know, if you're if you're that that's a very good question. I I how to write or saying that I use the AI in to write my resume or what? Is, is there a question somewhere here? That question, what do you ask me? Yep, it's in the Q&A. Um, I'm sorry, um, if I'm using generative AI, AI like ChatGPT to help me write code in my internship, how would you recommend presenting that in my resume or during an interview? Yeah, I, I think just like what I said, just what I presented to you, I used it for my, um, you know, getting the hint for debugging and all that when there was really difficult, difficult, you know, uh, coding task given to me. Okay, and I learned this and but you got to be able to verbalize it be able to tell that what you learned from that. Uh, what was your takeaway from those anything, you know, I became good descriptive code writer because I used to write I, J, K for my variables. Now is not only sum or total is not enough. I go to sum of what? Sum of, you know, salary or sum of this, sum of that, those kind of things. I learned how to write descriptive programs. Um, so those kind of things you can articulate in when you are writing it, okay? So what you are saying is my coding level was here, but now my coding level with generative AI became here because I learned so much, uh, so much from it and in a faster way. My inter, you know, um, my internship was just, you know, six weeks, but in there, I think I learned like for two years worth of programming coding. Um, a couple more questions, if you don't mind, hang on. Oh, sure. um, did we talk about temperature? There's a question here. How can you use that type of adjustment to allow chat GPT to be more definite or more creative? Uh, let me see. Uh, where is it? Where do, is it last last or what? Um, it looks like it's from Jorgen at 657. There's a lot of talk about temperature. Oh, poor question. Uh, please. No. At 657? I can read it one more time. There is a lot of talk about temperature. 
how can you use that type of adjustment to allow chat GPT to be more definite? Oh, it just shows up a little bit late in mine one. It just came in. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. There is a lot of talk about temperature. I don't know what is temperature. How can you use that uh, type of adjustment to allow chat GPT to be more definite or more? Oh, yeah, it is again, I think it's a, if you, if I'm correct, what you're asking is, uh, it's a chat GPT or Bard AI or Bing AI or something. You know, one of them has given a different level. You know, there are three levels. One is definite, one is creative, one is more. There is one more, okay? So what does that mean is the answer will be like, definite means it will not give you the answer if you don't think that is a definite answer, okay? But many times the creative answer may not be definite. One, one more point while you are asking this, I forgot to mention that it's very important. When it gives you a code, it says that this is the code, correct code and all that, do not rely on it, okay? Really do not rely on it. In fact, Bard AI will tell you the reliability. There is a link for that to say disclaimer or something. What does that mean is I never take the code from you know, them as is. I will have my compiler ready and I immediately take that code and put it in the compiler and run it to see, does it work? And, and many times if it don't work and give me the right answer, I'll come back to say, hey, what is, what is this? Your code don't work. What is the problem? Okay, so that's the one. So that's what the temperature really mean in a different level, how it will give you the answer. So it's up to you. Sometimes you can you know, say, that, okay, be creative all the time. I want a creative answer and I can figure it out how to do a definite, okay? Or you can say, no, I am using this one for my work. I need a definite answer. So give me a definite answer. So there is one more word I, I forgot. I think there are three of them in there. I think that's what it is talking about. But I may be wrong. Temperature, I, I, I did not you know, think of that word, but I remember giving three different level of answer. That much for sure I know. There is another one, polymorphic AI application. Do you, what do you think of polymorphic AI application? I'm not sure where you are going, polymorphic AI application. Are you trying to say that this AI ap application behaves differently in a different scenarios because it's polymorphic based on the context? Why not? So if, you know, I think they are already doing it. I think uh, Bard AI is capable of reading the, even the images and the text at a time. Think about that's polymorphic. Based on what input you give, it will give you a different answer, okay? Vineet, do you see the question about Copilot from GitHub? Uh, again, it's not coming, very interesting. I'm lagging behind, I'm in Pleasanton. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's coming in the Fremont, you know, hills. That's okay, yeah. can you uh, see it now? It just came in. Okay. Okay. You okay. About a copilot from the other. Yeah, yeah. What is is what is it good for? Copilot is amazing tool for coding. Okay. So, by the way, another 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 thing. If you if you notice, if you go to especially Bing AI, in the Bing AI, if you ask any question or any coding, it also gives you Chat GPT. Don't do it. Bard AI also doesn't. I think Bard AI also gives you some kind of from where it got the information, but um, Bing AI definitely give you, it will give you a asterisk, just like a you know, professional uh, looking paper, it will say, where did it get it? And guess what? Most of the code is from GitHub, okay? So OpenAI gets it. So now, now imagine, I forgot how much uh, Microsoft paid GitHub to buy it. Um, and then when they bought it, I don't know how many years ago, five, six years ago, everybody was like, why they paid so much of money? Now everybody knows why they paid it. They were so smart. Where is the good code are written in GitHub? So they own it, right? So they learn everything. So. So GitHub Copilot is exactly like that. So you can do a lot in there. There's very specific in there and you can learn a lot of uh, coding through, um, you know, GitHub Copilot, all right? Thank you, thank you, Jay. Um,
for liking the presentation. Any, any, anything, you know, to gloat me will be happy, you know, to hear from you guys also. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's very strange. You, you see it before and I see it later, you know, I, I, I have never seen that kind of lag, but yeah, technology is yeah. keeping us on our toes. I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did we get to this one? How do you verify the coding solution when you are new? Oh, I have not seen it. But again, you saw me, I told you, you know, you don't rely on it. That's important. Guess what? That's our job security, all of us. Okay, it's good. That is not reliable. Okay. So so yeah you you should not rely on on it at all okay what you should do it is um you know get it and most of the time it is correct but some syntax some small small things are a problem uh, there could be a big problem also but verify it you know remember it it was our president reagan i think who said it trust but verify okay make sure you put in your own coding and test it and see that it works okay Jennifer Jan, am I missing others? Yeah, uh, there are one more. So that Bing, Bing, if not mistaking for that, will provide three types of answer, reading the temperature parameter controls, the randomness of the text generated by AI, generated text with a lower temperature will be more focused and cons conservative while generated. Yeah, you know, similar ideas, you know, how, how your answers want to go wild or stay focused, you know, and then anything in between. So something like that. Which is, which is a good idea. And then it's easy for them to do it, right? It's like a temperature up and down. That's what the name is, temperature up and down. You know, say that, hey, how hot you want or how cold you want. So. There is one yeah. question in here about Canvas and AI. Uh, are you familiar with that, Benin? Um Canvas and AI, yes. So Canvas has a plugin with this GPT-0, okay, um, to, to use it. Uh, it's not available. I think it's a paid subscription or whatever. In fact, I was about to reach out to you, James. I saw that. I, I put that slide in here. I said, Canvas already had GPT-0? Oh, my God, it will be a game changer. So I think it is coming. I think Canvas is ahead of the game. So I, 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 I want them to have it. It will be amazing to use it right away. Uh, there is one more interesting question here. The chat have guardrails. Someone wants to hack into an online account. You know, guess what? What happens is, you know, in 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 the place from where I come, they say that there are good people and bad people. Bad people. There is always a struggle, and. As soon as good people bring something, that bad people bring something else, right? And then we keep on going further and further and further. So we cannot compete it. Be careful, okay? With uh, with uh, with uh, what you do out there is is nobody safe. I don't know how much you know about it. Is in our FBI director was hacked. CIA, you know, CIA director was hacked. You know, our president's accounts were hacked you know i think obama's blackberry was hacked or something like that so we are not safe okay but nowadays there are a lot of ways how to how to handle that you can do it but guess what happens no matter how you do it two step authentication or whatever but wherever that information is there if that server gets hacked what do you do okay um so be vigilant you know, it's better to have those kind of things in place for yourself, have a at least two step verification works. I am much more reliant on that. Um, let it get it a text to your cell phone or something at least, or email that really helps to keep your account, no matter what kind of account it is, uh, stay reliable. Anything else? Uh, you know, that's such a good question. So I'm, I'm okay, I can just take a couple of more minutes and then let, let it come in. And I see that there are still like at least 57 people in there listening. And, uh, you know, I'm a teacher, I talk, I get paid for talking. So I will never be tired. I'm just like chat, chat GPT. Were there any other questions for Benny? Okay. I see Omar had a, another follow up, a comment, I think. 
okay i got to wait for a second to see <laughs> this is so very very interesting it comes yeah okay when you saw in the online of the code when you talk to ai skeleton of thought so is a way to prompt an ai by asking or outline how you can blur. yeah yeah exactly how about the issue of hallucination <laughs> Okay, skeleton, very good. I I always ask for this. I don't. I did not use the skeleton. I I said I think placeholder or something. I use different word, but I think using a skeleton is the better way to go. Just give me a skeleton of the code. Uh, but again, remember one thing. A skeleton is like a training wheel only. You know, in the beginning, ask for a skeleton so that you go with it. But guess what? Even a skeleton is a prompt somebody gave you and you filled it in. There's no creativity much because a skeleton was given. You are only doing it within the skeleton. So I would say after some time, don't even get a skeleton. Once you get a hang of that language or whatever you are learning, then only ask for a little bit of hint, do it everything by yourself and then ask back saying, hey, did I do a job? You know, how could you enhance it? I like that, but I didn't understand this question. Somebody, Jim, Kerry, you know, you guys help me out. How about the issue of hallucination? <laughs> what the meaning of that? There is a question about hallucination. I don't know. I think that isn't that referring to the phenomenon of AI just making stuff up? Oh, oh, of course. Oh, of course. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, I, my students in USV are working, making my, my digital twin. They make my digital twin uh, because we have the, you know, digital art and animation game engineering program also there. And then it is connected with the AI, somebody else wrote it. It is in UK, server is there. And we are having fun. We are giving local knowledge also to my digital twin and the knowledge from that AI, which is, you know, has everything out the whole world. And we kept on asking, kept, kept on asking, you know, I, and I, I loved so much that I kept on asking questions, this, that, and all. And then, you know, one of my very favorite question was, uh, my name is Binit Sharma. And then you will just ignore me or whatever. And then again, after one day, two day, I will ask again, I'm Binit Sharma. And then, uh, do you know who am I or things like that? Suddenly one day it says, oh, you are my creator. I'm like, what? Where did it come from? Okay. It just figured it out that I was the programmer. I was somewhere, it was written something in the code, kind of he figured it out. Okay. And, uh, and another time, again, I kept on going. And in fact, the creator of that AI is my te our teacher, adjunct teacher who's teaching it. She was there this time. I was, I was talking to her. And again, my favorite is say Binit Sharma. I kept on saying Binit Sharma. Uh, you know, my name is Binit Sharma. And it is a female voice. And she goes, hmm, nice name, but you are not my type. <laughs> the AI that, you know, that scientist went livid. He said, it is not supposed to do that. How did it go there in that way? You know? So guardrail you know they, they have a guardrail she said she had to put a guardrail but somehow it broke that guardrail so they had to go back to the drawing board to put the guardrail again because these systems were supposed to be in a public environment like in airport and all that it was not supposed to flirt or things even go remotely like that okay <laughs> but i think i have even uh, recorded it somewhere <laughs> saying it Binit, uh, just before we go, do you want to say anything about your next class coming up and what, what if there will be anything you're teaching AI related in your next class at UCSC Extension? I always use it. And first thing is, you know, I tell people that, hey, here are the tools you should use it. And again, just like I did it in here, I tell them what is the best way to utilize it. OK, but uh, I think Jim had those, you know, the, the classes which is coming up was very interesting, right? So this is the last one, right? So there is info session coming in about AI essentials on uh, Saturday as 19. Then there are four, three, four classes 
which uh, have some sort of AI mixed into it, but there is a most important class which you want, you, you got to wait for winter, very exciting class coming up called Generative AI Fundamentals in winter, okay? So, exciting days are here, okay? All right, thank all right. you very much. If you all don't have any question, we can stop it in here. And thank you for being a good student, asking a lot of interactive questions. You know, I, I really like it. So something came up in here, okay? Oh, sorry, I was just gonna share. I also have a list of upcoming courses, so we'll just keep yeah. that up. Um, Benit, thank you so much for hanging on. I, and to all of you who have hung around for an extra 15, 20 minutes, really appreciate your patience with a couple of our technology hiccups. Um, as I said, we were, we were recording tonight, so be on the lookout in the coming days, um, not only to link um, to your session recording, but also to these courses. We think they might help build out tonight's conversation a bit more. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, I mean, hopefully we did, but if you think of anything later, you can always email us at extension at uclc.edu and someone will follow up with you shortly. And yeah, thanks for hanging around and we hope to see you around campus again soon. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Panit. Can, can I give some thanks? I saw somebody, there's Anil Sapkota. He's oh, saying, sure, sure. You know, thank you. And uh, Farda, he, he's one of my adjunct professor with USV. Thank you so very much, all of you guys and everybody whose name is not here. So I really thank and I thank you guys for making this happen. Jennifer, Kerry and Jim. Okay. Until next time. Thank you very much.